This is an this right here is an ESP32. This is an ESP32. And the model I'm using for this video is ESPW Room 32. It is one of the most powerful low-cost microcontrollers that has built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth capabilities. It is widely used for IoT projects, home automation, and robotics. The ESP32 that I have has 38 pins and why you should be choosing ESP32? It's because it is affordable, easily programmable with either Arduino IDE or you can program it with MicroPython. It has open source libraries and a large community for support. So the basics right here is that we have two buttons, the boot and the reset. The boot button is used when you are programming it and you need to hold it down to make the ESP32 enter into the programming mode. And for the reset button, you press it to reset the board. We have an Android cable connector right here. So for that, I am going to use my Android cable. And I cannot directly connect it with my computer. For that, I need to install the driver. Now, how do you know what driver you need to install? Depending on your board model, you will have this chip right here. For me, it is CP210X USB to UARD. So I'm going to install the CP210X. So I provided the link in the description below. I'm using Windows. So I'm going to install the CP210X Windows drivers by the Silicon Labs. You, if you're using Mac, make sure to install the Mac version. Just click on this Windows drivers and it will automatically download and you will be able to see it in the download folders. For me, I already have it downloaded, so I'm gonna go straight to the downloads folder. Right here, I have it, right, I'm gonna go straight to the downloads folder. Right here, I have the Windows drivers and I can extract it extract to just click on that once extracted you will have the folder like this and click on cp210x64 installer once click on that it will ask you for more permissions and just click on the yes and it's going to start the installation now all you need to do is just click on next and accept this agreement then click on next it will take some time to install and then once installed it will be successfully installed and finished ready to use what we have to do is install the library for ESP32. So just click on the file and click on preferences. In the preferences, go to additional board manager URLs and paste the URL here. You can find it in the description below and just click on OK. Once you click on OK and OK again, it, you will see on the bottom right corner that it is downloading the packages. Okay, once it installs all the packages, all you gotta do is click on tools and go to boards and here you will see Arduino ESP32 separately. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to connect my ESP32 board. Now I'm just going to connect my ESP32. First let's just install it on the breadboard. Now, I'm going to connect it with the cable. Just do it. You will see that the boards are connected automatically and it is just connected. Now, first up, to make sure that the libraries down are downloaded and installed and your ID is picking up on ESP32, you can, you know, also select the board type from here. For me, it's Rover module. I'm gonna select, I'm gonna select any module here, okay? I'm just gonna go with this one and just go to file, go to examples and right here, you can go to ESP32. I'm just gonna, you know, select this LED C fade example. Once you clicked on it, the example will open up and now I'm just going to upload this code right here. Before you upload it, you have to do a little bit of stuff. You can see that they are defining LED pin 4, which means that you have to connect your pin 
with GPIO4 or G4. So I'm just going to go with one LED. Let's go with this LED. Let's connect this green LED with G4. Okay. And then connect the other end with the ground. Need to connect it and upload the code. It will take some time. In case you are having troubles uploading your code, make sure to press the boot button. In my case, I don't have to press this boot button necessarily. So you can see that the code is being uploaded. Okay, now I'm just gonna connect it with the ground pin. And you can see right here that the ESP32 works fine.